In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to calculate area underneath the curve of the dyno chart. Whether it's horsepower or torque, the calculation is the same. A lot of people would like to compare the area underneath the curve when they talk about, you know, dyno charts. So this is one way to do that. The one thing we need to understand when we're talking about calculating area underneath the curve is that there's three basic rules. There's the trapezoid rule, the midpoint rule, and Simpson's rule. The trapezoid rule is the most basic one. Uh, it basically just calculates the area of a trapezoid. Uh, the area of the curve is broken down into hundreds, if not thousands, of trapezoids, and then those areas are individually added and calculated um, and added up. The midpoint rule is similar to that, but uh, it, it finds the midpoint better. Simpson's rule essentially fits small little parabolas um, into, the, uh, into the area of the curve and estimates it that way. Sometimes we may not have all the data, uh, all the RPM data. Some samples might be missing. That would preclude both the midpoint method and Simpson's rules. Since people uh, always want to create drama, on dyno charts and comparing one supercharger to another or everybody's tuned to another. I've got the dyno charts of ESS, Gintani, VF, and Active Auto Works. I chose these four entries because they all have approximately the same horsepower uh, within about two horsepower of each other and they all have approximately the same torque within five foot-pounds of torque of each other. So we should be able to calculate the area underneath the curve and let everybody just go ahead and argue about what that means. All of these uh, dyno files are available in the dyno database at www.s65dynos.com. That's www.s65dynos.com to find them in the dyno database. I've already prepared these files in the Excel spreadsheet. Inside this spreadsheet, there are the formulas uh, for the trapezoid rule, the midpoint method, and Simpson's rule. We're going to use the trapezoid rule. In order to calculate the area under the curve, we have a function written in Visual Basic called trap rule, which calculates the area underneath the curve. Trap rule takes four arguments. The arguments are the variables, the things that you pass to the function. Um, it takes the column of RPMs, you'll notice that RPMs is in the A column. It takes the columns of the horsepower and torque, torque being in the I column and horsepower being in the J column. And it also takes a starting and ending RPM value. The first argument is the RPM column. The second argument would be the horsepower or torque column. The third argument would be the start RPM and the last argument, the fourth argument, would be the end RPM. There's also an optional fifth argument that um, will help the trapezoid rule, that will help calculating the area in, under the curve, and it will automatically update in case you want to change the dyno correction fact. The first, the first argument is the RPM column. In this case, it's going to be A for the A column. Uh, the torque or horsepower column is going to be a hor we're going to do horsepower first, so that would be J. So we'll start at 2560, and it looks like we reach max horsepower at 8320, so we're going to go up to 8320. And like all formulas in Excel, they start with an equal sign, so we say equals trap rule, and we give it those arguments that we just saw there. The first argument is going to be A for the RPMs, J for the horsepower, uh, 2560 for the starting RPM and 8320 for the ending RPM. And we come up with a total area of uh, 207.8997 units. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for torque. To calculate the area into the torque, we're going to say equals trap rule, A column, I column, 2560 and 8320. And we come up with 1950750 units. Now you watch what happens when we when we uh, change the horsepower correction factor to STD that those values do not update. The value for the area does not update. It would be really nice if we could get it to update 
these numbers automatically. And that's where this fifth argument to the function comes in. The way that we get it to auto update is we add a fifth argument. The value of the fifth argument should be um, either something in column I or column J. It doesn't, you know, one of the two, it doesn't really matter because they're both updated automatically. The point is, is that if we want to um, change the horsepower correction, those values are automatically updated. And by passing one of those values to the horsepower correction formula, uh, excuse me, to the area under the curve formula, we will automatically update um, the values for area underneath the curve. In order to make this a fair comparison, we have to compare the same area for, for each competitive product. So the way we do that is let's look at the graphs, let's look at the data, let's find out where the data um, uh, starts and ends, and we'll choose a reasonable amount. In order to make a fair comparison, we need to select the RPM that's the highest the highest starting RPM of all of the comparisons. In this case, Active has the highest starting RPM at 2780. So let's be reasonable. Let's start all of them at 2800. And on the other side, ESS has the highest um, max horsepower at, at, uh, at 8320. So we need to go up to at least 8320 on all of the kits. When researching this subject, a few people suggested to use the built-in functions in Excel to calculate the area underneath the curve. Let me show why that cannot be done. They suggest to calculate the area underneath the curve by adding a trend line, getting the formula for the trend line, and then doing a direct calculus integration of that formula. That would be the most accurate if it would work, but as you will see, it does not work. To get the trend line, first let's click on the data, uh, the line itself on the screen. Right-click the mouse, which brings up a, a submenu, and we will select Add Trend Line. Here we get another set of options on the screen, and you will know, notice that uh, a nice little black line has been added to the graph that goes right through our torque curve. We can choose from different types of trend lines. We can choose from an exponential, linear, logarithmic, polynomial. To get the formula for the trend line, all we need to do is click this box down at the bottom that says display equation on chart. And sure enough, you see that a nice equation appears on the chart right underneath the trend line. If we were to use calculus directly on that, on that formula, we would calculate the exact area underneath the curve. That's the, that's the theory behind doing this method. But we can't do it in this case. If we try the power method, you see it just goes straight through we can do something like a moving average. The moving average is extremely accurate and it precisely follows the line. However, the downside is we no longer get to display the equation on the chart, which means we can no longer... The downside is we can no longer display the equation on the chart. As you can see, it's grayed out. The button for uh, displaying the equation on the chart is grayed out, and we can no longer use that method. Thank you for watching this video series on graphing dyno charts in Excel. In the first video, I showed how to export data from a DinoJet dyno file, import it into Excel, and create a basic graph. In the second video, I showed some of the advanced features of graphing dyno charts in Excel using this spreadsheet. And in this third and final video, I show how to calculate the area underneath the curve of horsepower and torque charts. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful.